Hey folks, this month in Arting Out with Scott Fisher, we're going to talk about making your own props in the program known as Alchemy. It's a quick and easy program that you can use um, to develop all sorts of objects from weapons to buildings to trees to whatever. You can then take those crude objects and you can get them into Photoshop where you can refine them and make them look as pretty as you want them to be. But the idea is to come up with some core ideas to begin with to help you out. And I think what most people do, especially when starting out, is they just jump to Google Images and they type in Fantasy Sword, and they get a ton of results here. And they'll probably take one of these, get it into Photoshop, beat it up, do whatever, manipulate it so that it works for their image. But you can come up with much more original concepts if you just jump into Alchemy for a few minutes uh, ahead of time. You could also, of course, get into SketchUp or 3D programs and be able to position the weapons wherever you want. But again, you're not using original designs and those instances, and the idea here is to try to come up with a, as quickly and as efficiently as possible to come up with a prop that you can then take into Photoshop and have a good time with it. The program we are using is Alchemy, which is A-L dot C-H-E-M-Y dot org. And like I said, it's free and it's amazing. It's a rudimentary program. It's pretty darn basic, um, but that is the beauty of it in my opinion. So let's clear out what I've done here. And let's go ahead and see how long it would take me to come up with a sword idea. You can draw a couple of ways in alchemy. You can draw over here in style. You have the choice of drawing with line, which as you would suspect would be a line. And you can choose also in shape. Shape is a really neat one because basically whatever shape you make is it's going to fill it in with whatever value and color you've selected in the program. So to start off, I often will go with style, though. The other thing that Alchemy does, well, it does a ton of things, but for the purposes of this demo, the other thing that it does is it has a mirror mode, which is a beautiful mode, of course. As you know, Photoshop has this now, probably, but um, this predates that by quite a bit, and it's just, I actually find it, again, super quick and super intuitive just to do it in Alchemy. So you find the center of it, which is what we've got right here. That's gonna tell us where the center line is, where the two things are crossing. And then let's go ahead and come up with a sword design. So here we go. we got 844 on the clock in the upper right-hand corner. How quickly can we come up with a bitchin' sword that we can then take into Photoshop and do something else to it if we want to? Of course, the beauty of mirror mode is that we only have to draw on one side of the object, and it makes it completely symmetrical down the other side. I don't know, it looks like I'm coming up with some kind of bird theme here. Maybe this is a sword for an angel, for instance. Now, don't worry too much about the length of the blade. Um, actually, you know what? Scratch this. We are going to worry about the length of the blade. Let's go ahead and take this out, and we're going to start it over. Because, again, that's the beauty of alchemy. If you mess it up, grab it again and start over again. I was going to say, with the blade, you can always extend that in Photoshop. So sometimes I'll just do, like, the tip of the blade and then the, the hilt, and then I'll just combine the two in Photoshop, and I'll stretch the blade and transform as big as I want to to make it work. But for the, let's just go back into here really quick. Let's see if we can do it just a little bit more proportional to our needs. Because this is all about speed and you can bust out, geez, you can bust out, you know, 10 of these weapons in no time in this program. And choose your favorite one if you'd like. Okay. some feathers on there real quick. There. And actually,
actually, we don't like the proportions of those either. So what do we do? There's no erase in alchemy, and there's no undo in alchemy. So what you got to do is you got to paint over whatever it is you don't like. So quickly, we can go to style, where we're going to fill with shape, and we're going to be filling with the white background color. And we're going to trim down these wings a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. All right. Back into style, back onto black. That's better for me. Nice little handle going on. Uh, we'll refinish the bottom of this in some kind of almost tail feather way. Continuing with that angel theme. Okay, so there you have a really quick design. It took us very little time. It's something that's completely original, doesn't exist, nobody's ever done it before. You can now take this into Photoshop and you could beat it up and you could paint it and you could do whatever you wanted with it in there uh, to take it to that next level. But let's go ahead and pursue this a little bit more while we're in the program. Let's just take this a little bit further within Alchemy. We're talking about style. Style is the way you fill in where it fills in the shape. But you also have a transparency slider here, which is great. It's basically opacity in Photoshop, right? Works like a multiply in that since it's black, the more layers you put on, the darker and darker it's going to get until it turns all the way to black. But you can use it to fill in objects really quick, like our sword here. You only have to fill in half the sword because we're still in the mirror mode. Now you see how it's going much wider than we want it? Well, I understand that. And as I'm working it back, look, it cuts back in and gets back where we want it to. I'm just pretty much following the outline of my weapon. And there we go. We got the whole thing filled in. Now you see the darker section right down the center of it. Well, that's where the shape overlapped on the very center line of the image. We can go ahead and cast some shadows. Figure it a little darker underneath here, universally. We can cut it in here a little bit, get a little dimension in there. A little of that happening. Let's go ahead and take the leathers of the sword handle a little bit further in value. Now, the other cool thing about alchemy is not only can you fill in with shape, but you also have the option of filling in with gradient. As that would imply, it's going to fill in with a gradient now instead of the shape. From your focal point, it's going to start filling in. So it's going to be the darkest where you started making the mark. And if you start rounding all the way back again, it does this interesting thing where it starts cutting back in on itself. Do you see that action there? But you can learn to control this. And you could fill in this whole entire weapon so that the whole weapon gets darker towards the tip, which is something I picked up a long time ago. But with metal in general, the way it catches light, it actually will travel often from light to dark along the flank of it, right? So it's sort of an instant way to get your weapons or your swords especially to feel, feel a little bit more dimension to them is to just make it travel to dark because it's reflective it's going to reflect whatever's behind it so if you have a bunch of dark trees behind it it literally could be black the tip of your blade right um but i'm sure all of you have held a piece of metal out in the light and you've moved it and you realize you can kind of change where the sun reflects on it so it's the same principle here go ahead and darken the tips of these as they get away and we're going to also go ahead and throw a little gradient under as it cuts under in there, like that, uh, like that there. Okay. 
Now we're actually going to start doing some asymmetrical work. So we're going to take it off of mirror mode. We'll leave it on gradient for now, but we're going to take it off mirror mode. So now we're only going to make a mark where we make a mark and it's not going to duplicate itself on the other side. So you can go in with some smaller details and you can give the weapon, the metal, the object, whatever, just a little bit more of a weathered look. Again, I do this with entire buildings where I'll build them like this in, in alchemy really quick. And this is a way you can get like bricks and vines and dirt and stuff on the side of the building if you wanted to. Just a quick little way to make it so it's like not so mirrored of itself. In fact, I'll darken the entire side of the blade over here a little bit more so it's lighter on one side than the other. A little more shadow on this side and it kind of looks like there's a face happening in there so we're going to roll with that. And now I'm actually going to take it off of gradient so I can not worry about that and I can just fill it in a little bit more directly. blood channel or whatever that's referred to as a little bit darker there cool all right now we can actually go the other way with it so if we go ahead and flip over well we can do it a number of ways but if we go ahead and just flip it to the background color we're now on the white we can start going in. Let's go ahead and turn down the transparency of it so we can be gentle with this, but we can go in and we can build up the highlights on one side of this thing a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that up a little bit more. And I'm just kind of thinking about the way light might travel over this. And I'm going to go ahead and go full blast and I'm going to clean up some of this. Now look at that, it's totally filling it in, but I'm not gonna panic, because I haven't lifted up my stylus yet. And as soon as I go back the other way, ba -bum! We'll do the same thing over here. Oh crap, it's filling it in, I've screwed up, I gotta do it all over. Nah man, we're good. Just roll it back that way. As long as you don't lift it up. A little bit of extra sheen down in here. All right, now I'm gonna actually go ahead and switch it back onto line again. So we can go down the far side of the blood channel and give it a little bit more bling. And we'll do a couple scratches here and there. Is there a little bit of engraving on the feathers? I don't know. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, we can go ahead and get back onto style and you can do cool things like take a chip out of it. Distress it a little bit like that. And then you could just, you know, just keep tinkering with it until you like the way it looks. Go ahead and get back on the dark side of it. Cast a little bit more shadow from the bridge of the eyes over here. I guess they're eyes. I don't know. Kind of looks like a skull. Looks like a some kind of old witch or something. I don't know what's going on there. But you know, you got to understand it. Also, oftentimes these props are going to be a pretty small thing in your image, right? Um, 
so you only need to have so much detail in them. Unless it's all about that object, and of course, if I had a job where I was just going to be making weapons all day long, you can bet I'm going to be in alchemy making them. You can actually go ahead and do a color drop on this stuff, too. If we go up to full opacity, and you hit the letter I, you can color pick stuff. I don't know if I want the channel to go all the way down there, so I'm going to kind of come in right there with it. And then I might grab another, like, darker thing, and maybe we'll make, like, a circle there, cast a slightly darker edge to it here. That's looking pretty cool. Maybe we go back over to the lighter section. Boop. And I'll go ahead and I'll try to create a little bit more of that edge that would happen right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. A little bit like that. Okay, we'll cast a little bit of light down in there, and we can do that with the style again if we get on the lighter color by just inverting it. We can just invert it. Like, ah, okay, well, we just selected it. It's just white there. Here's something fun. You can actually draw with gradient. So we're on line mode, but the line is actually going to have a gradient to it. See how it's fading? It's almost like a faux pressure control, but it really um, is just fading out on its own without having anything to do with how much pressure I'm putting on the stylus. But you can get in and do some subtle stuff with it like we're doing right there on that, I don't know, fill of whatever it is. Pull that there. Some kind of spooky eyes there. Whatever, man. It's fantasy. We can do what we want to. As you can imagine, you actually can get take this pretty far if you wanted to within this program. But I really like it just to save me the homework of having to do this on my live image in Photoshop. If I already know where my weapon is going to go or my sword is going to go. Oh man, this just makes this just makes life fun. And I, there's one other thing I'll say about this as well. I, I like breaking out, like if, if you're slogging on your image in Photoshop, you've just been working on it for days, it's actually kind of a refreshing change of pace to be like, oh, I need a sword, or oh, I need some kind of big ass demon, or whatever, and you can jump into um, this program and it's almost like you can take a break for a second. You've probably already thumbnailed it out. You probably already know where this object's going in your image. So, you know, it's just going to be a matter of, uh, you know, making it here, enjoying uh, taking the break from Photoshop itself, and then uh, getting back into Photoshop with this and manipulating it and put it right where you've already probably designed that it's supposed to be. down there and that's probably sufficient for this demo I'm gonna guess I think we've pretty much covered one way to build up one of these weapons really fast you can then again the final step would be taking this into Photoshop and banging it up even more um, painting on it more refining it more if it was going to be prominently displayed and uh, and making it work for you but you know the whole idea is this thing doesn't exist. It never existed before I did this little piece here. It didn't take me that long to do it. I mean, how long is this whole video? And that was me babbling the whole time. So I suggest to all of you to, you know, break out of your shell, go jump into Alchemy, have a good time designing some weapons, and, uh, and see what you get, man. You might arrive at something because of the randomness of the program that you didn't expect. Okay, that is going to do it for this. Thanks so much, folks.